They started small. It was an efficiency tweak boosted night vision. The eyes a stark milky white after they injected the serum. We grumbled about looking like lab rats, but it worked. Slicing through those jungle nights was suddenly easy. We took territory like it was handed to us on a silver platter. Then it was adrenal pumps. Fight for days without stopping, no sleep, no faltering focus. We hit our targets over and over. Victory made us cocky, and that's when the real changes started. Blades were the first big jump. I refused. Not just me. A bunch of us. Commander had to make an example out of someone, so they picked Jackson. Old guy. Seen more battlefields than the rest of us combined. He screamed for hours while they integrated the tech. One arm gone, replaced by a glistening arc of metal, serrated from elbow to fingertips. Jackson. He lost his damn mind. Between missions, that blade was his obsession. Sharpening it muttering to the thing like it talked back. When they said the rest of us had to get it, I went along. Couldn't end up like Jackson. My turn. I fought to stay awake during the procedure. The pain was unreal, like they were melting my bones and pouring them back in. Afterward, in the dimness of the infirmary, I tested the blade. It moved fluid as my own arm, faster even. There was this satisfaction to the way it sliced the air. A wrong sort of satisfaction. Then came the compound eyes. The world became a kaleidoscope of thermal signatures and infrared, a hundred new shades we couldn't name. Some guys couldn't take it, the overstimulation. Went blind, tore their own eyes out. I hated it, but it made us near unstoppable on night raids. Every upgrade made us into something less human. The enemy, they started surrendering at the sight of us, cowering like we were demons ripped from their nightmares. Maybe we were. The higher-ups, they didn't seem to care about us. Just the results. And the results? Hell, they were damn good. Now they're talking about carapace segments, insectile armor meant to make us bulletproof. The sketches they gave us? No faces. Just segmented bodies and those damn blades. I'm good at this. The best in my unit. And I'm terrified of what I'll become to keep it that way. Each mission, I fight to hold on to a shred of myself. I don't know how long that fight will last. The fluorescent lights buzzed like angry wasps as I stared at the medical bay door. Steel and sterile white. A stark contrast to the churn of anxieties roiling in my gut. Today was the carapace integration, the final upgrade, or so they claimed. Corporal Hicks, a lanky kid who joined fresh out of training, was already strapped to the table. They'd started on him first, a grim sort of encouragement, or maybe a warning. His screams were muffled through the thick medical-grade door. Doc Bones glanced at me, something like pity in his perpetually bloodshot eyes. You ready, soldier? Ready? How could anyone be ready for this? I gripped the arms of the hard plastic chair, knuckles turning white. Just get it done, Doc. They wheeled Hicks out, his face a mask of pale, glistening sweat, eyes wide with a raw, primal terror. The Doc gave me a curt nod and ushered me in. The surgical table was cold and unforgiving. Straps dug into my limbs as they loaded me with biosensors, the cold metal biting at my exposed skin. Doc Bones, flanked by two burly techs, hovered over me, his voice clipped and emotionless. General anaesthetic won't work for this soldier. You'll need to be awake the whole time. My throat went dry. Great, just peachy. The next few hours were a blur of agonizing pressure, bone sores carving through my flesh, the metallic scent thick in the air. They grafted the carapace segments onto my back, chest and limbs, a dark mockery of insect armor. The pain was a constant gnawing beast, but it was the sounds that haunted me the most. The crunch of bone, the hiss of searing flesh, the metallic drone of tools. Through the haze of excruciating agony, I caught snippets of conversation. Bones arguing with an unseen superior about structural integrity, the techs muttering about my grit under the pain. A twisted sense of pride welled up within me. Even in this state, I was something. 
A monster, yes, but a monster built for this war machine. When it was finally over, I was left trembling on the table. My scream had been reduced to a ragged gasp, my voice hoarse from the hours of silent suffering. Bones gave me a slap on the shoulder, a gesture that felt alien and wrong. Welcome to the next level, soldier. He helped me upright, and the weight of the carapace threatened to topple me. It felt foreign, unnatural, like I was encased in a living tomb. With each shaky step, a grinding sensation emanated from my joints. They led me to a full-body mirror. I barely recognized myself. The man staring back was more machine than man. My face was gaunt, hollowed from the ordeal, the milky white of my night vision gleaming like a predator's eyes. Where there was once skin, now gleamed a dark segmented shell, the edges razor sharp. The monstrosity in the mirror raised a hand, the segmented arm a marvel of engineering horror. The blade on the wrist, an extension of myself, glinted coldly under the harsh fluorescent light. A soldier, they called us. But soldiers fought for something, for a cause. We were weapons, tools honed to a single purpose. The brutal subjugation of a planet and its people. In the reflection's cold, emotionless eyes, I saw no humanity left. Just the glint of a predator, ready to be unleashed. The barracks were silent. Gone were the coughs, snores and hushed conversations of men sharing this cramped space. No one dared look me in the eye, flinching away as I passed. I found my bunk, a slab of metal masquerading as a bed. Sleeping would be a challenge. Every part of me throbbed with a dull ache. Suddenly the comm crackled to life, Sergeant Hammer's gruff voice filling the room. Gear up, maggots. We got a new target. Seems the bugs are getting restless in the western sectors. A collective groan rippled through the room, quickly silenced by Hammer's bark. I gritted my teeth, the movement sending a fresh wave of pain through my jaw. There was no time to adjust. No time to mourn the humanity I'd shed on the operating table. The hangar was a hive of activity. Men strapped on their gear, faces grim under the harsh spotlights. The new recruits, fresh out of training, looked pale and terrified. One stumbled, his eyes wide with a primal fear that sent a shiver down my augmented spine. A seasoned soldier like me shouldn't be spooked by a rookie's jitters, but something about their raw terror felt like a forgotten memory, a fragment of the life I'd left behind. I strapped on my modified weapon, the weight familiar in my hand. We boarded the dropship, the stench of sweat and recycled air an oppressive blanket. As the ship roared to life, I looked out at the desolate landscape rushing past the viewport. The planet we fought on was a wasteland, ravaged by war and choked with toxic fumes. The enemy, the so-called bugs, were insectoid creatures driven from their homes by our relentless onslaught. Landing was a jarring jolt. We disembarked into a cratered landscape, the alien sun casting distorted shadows. Sergeant Hammer pointed towards a cluster of jagged rock formations. Intel says they're holed up in those caves. Wipe them out. We advanced cautiously, the silence broken only by the crunch of our boots on the rocky ground. The carapace felt heavy, restrictive, yet a twisted sense of security washed over me. It was new, this feeling of being more machine than man, but on this battlefield, it was an advantage. Suddenly, a shriek pierced the silence. A swarm of the insectoids erupted from the caves. Their multifaceted eyes glowed with an eerie intelligence, their mandibles clicking in a menacing rhythm. The rookie beside me let out a strangled cry, fumbling with his weapon. Before I could react, a creature lunged, its mandibles snapping at his exposed neck. Time seemed to slow down. With a primal snarl, I shoved the rookie aside, the creature's attack glancing off my carapace with a clang. Instinct took over. I moved with a speed and ferocity inhuman, the blade on my wrist a whirlwind of destruction. I carved through the insectoid swarm. My new form, monstrous as it was, became a weapon of terrifying efficiency. 
The air throbbed with the buzzing of alien wings, the metallic scent of blood mixed with the acrid tang of burning chitin. Around me, men fought with a desperate ferocity, their humanity lost in the heat of the battle. Finally, there was silence. The remaining insectoids scurried away, leaving a battlefield littered with the corpses of their brethren. Panting, I surveyed the carnage. My body was slick with ichor, the blade on my wrist dripping with a viscous fluid. Looking at my hand, I barely recognized it. More machine than flesh. A strange emptiness washed over me, a hollow victory amidst the ruins. Maybe somewhere deep down, a part of the man I used to be protested, but the sound was drowned out by the cold, emotionless voice of the weapon I had become. The war would continue, the victories pile up like the bodies of the fallen, and with each battle, I would lose another piece of myself, becoming one with the monstrosity. We stood amidst the carnage, the stench of burned chitin and alien ichor stinging my nostrils. The setting alien sun cast long, distorted shadows across the battlefield, turning the corpses of the insectoids into grotesque silhouettes. Sergeant Hammer, his weathered face grim beneath his cracked visor, surveyed the scene. Good work, maggots, he said, his voice raw from shouting orders during the fight, but keep your guard up. These bugs are getting bolder. No one dared to argue. We were all too aware of the escalating brutality of this war. The enemy, driven from their homes and pushed to desperation, were launching increasingly daring attacks, and we, the supposedly superior force, were becoming more monster than man with each upgrade. The rookies, their faces pale and drawn, stumbled around the battlefield, picking at the alien bodies with a morbid curiosity. One, a kid no older than eighteen, threw up at the sight of a creature's glistening innards spilling onto the dusty ground. A forgotten feeling, perhaps pity, stirred within me. It was quickly extinguished. We loaded the bodies of our fallen comrades onto a repulsor sled, their faces contorted in eternal screams. They were just another casualty in this endless war, another statistic in a conflict with no clear end in sight. Back at the base, the stench of sweat and recycled air assaulted me as I entered the barracks. My bunk beckoned, a promise of a few precious hours of oblivion before the next mission. As I lay there, the metallic shell pressing down on me, a realization dawned. The pain from the surgery had subsided, but it was replaced by emptiness. This new form, designed for brutal efficiency, offered no comfort, no solace. It was a prison encasing the fading remnants of who I used to be. Sleep wouldn't come. My mind replayed the battle, the metallic clang of my blade against the chitinous enemy. A horrifying truth settled in my gut. The line between soldier and weapon had blurred. I was becoming the very monster we were sent here to eradicate. Dawn arrived, a pale sliver of light filtering through the grimy windows, the comm crackled to life, Sergeant Hammer's voice a harsh summons. Gear up, soldiers! More bugs to squash! I rose from my bunk, the familiar ache in my joints a dull counterpoint to the hollowness within. Each day bled into the next, a monotonous cycle of violence and exhaustion. We were machines, tools of war, stripped of our humanity for the sake of an increasingly dubious victory. One day, a rumour started circulating through the ranks. Whispers of a rebellion, a group of soldiers who refused the final integration. But such heresies were dealt with swiftly and brutally. The ringleaders were rounded up, the terror twisting their faces as their screams filled the base before they were unceremoniously executed. The message was clear. Defiance would not be tolerated. Days turned into weeks the relentless churn of battle leaving little room for introspection. Each mission was a brutal ballet of violence, the insectoid swarms relentless in their fury. The rebellion whispers had died, silence replacing them. We, the upgraded soldiers, were a living testament to the consequences of dissent. Doc Bones called us the Iron Guard, a moniker as cold and brutal as the world we fought in. One scorching afternoon, as we huddled in the fetid shade of a half-collapsed building, 
Sergeant Hammer barked a new directive. We were to capture a live specimen, intel suggesting the bugs possessed a rudimentary communications network. The thought of getting close enough to grab one alive horrified me. These weren't mindless drones. Their multifaceted eyes held a spark of intelligence, a reflection of our own desperate struggle for survival. The attack unfolded in a chaotic mess. The swarms seemed denser than usual, their buzzing a deafening thrumming in my skull. My blade, an extension of my augmented arm, carved a bloody swathe through the insectoids. But for everyone I cut down, two more seemed to take its place. Through the chaos, I spotted a particularly large creature, its glistening black exoskeleton glowing with blue light. It was the leader, the one coordinating the attack with a series of chitters and clicks. I lunged, adrenaline pumping through my veins, the monstrous roar that escaped my lips more animalistic than human. It turned, its multifaceted eyes glinting with an intelligence. For a fleeting moment, I saw something familiar in its gaze. A desperate fight for survival, a fear of annihilation. But the moment was gone in a flash. With a shriek that tore through the air, the creature lashed out, its razor-sharp mandibles snapping at my head. The impact sent a jolt of pain through my augmented skull. I retaliated with a swipe, severing one of its legs in a clean spray of emerald ichor. The creature recoiled, its chitters turning into a screech of pain and fury. Seizing my opportunity, I lunged forward, pinning it to the ground with my augmented strength. Its remaining mandibles snapped at my face, the smell of burning chitin acrid in my nostrils. Just as I raised my blade to deliver the final blow, a hand clamped roughly on my shoulder. It was Sergeant Hammer, his face contorted in a snarl. Hold it, soldier! We need it alive! The creature writhed beneath me, its multifaceted eyes fixed on me with a terrifying intensity. I felt a strange kinship with it, a shared understanding of the monsters we had become. Get it in the damn cage! Hammer roared, shoving a reinforced metal box at me. With a grimace, I wrestled it into the cage. As we retreated, leaving the battlefield littered with twitching insectoid bodies, the creature's defiant screech rang in my ears. Back at base, the captured insectoid was subjected to a battery of tests. Scientists prodded and poked, their faces illuminated by the cold light of sterile machines. They spoke of extracting information, of gaining an advantage in this brutal war. But as I watched it writhe, its defiance slowly fading under the harsh lights, a cold dread settled in my gut. Their fate, it seemed, mirrored our own. We were all pawns in this endless game of destruction. Humanity sacrificed on the altar of a dubious victory. The captured creature's screams carried through the base, a constant and horrifying soundtrack to our weary existence. The scientists, pale figures cloaked in white lab coats, worked tirelessly, extracting whatever secrets they could from the writhing mass of chitin and fury. Sleep offered no escape. The creature's desperate screech burrowed into my dreams. Each morning brought a fresh mission, a relentless cycle of violence that chipped away at what little humanity remained within me. One day, a new directive dropped from command. We were to push further into the enemy territory, a scorched wasteland rumoured to hold the heart of their hive. This wasn't just another raid. It felt like a turning point, a desperate gamble for a decisive victory. The journey was a gruelling trek across a desolate landscape. The alien sun beat down relentlessly, turning the sand into a sea of heat. Our water rations dwindled with each passing hour, thirst a constant companion. Days blurred into one another, the only markers the occasional carcass of a fallen comrade, bleached white by the relentless sun. On the fourth day, a tremor shook the ground. An ominous silhouette appeared on the horizon, a colossal structure that dwarfed anything we had encountered before. The Hive. Sergeant Hammer's grim voice crackled through the comm. Target acquired. Prepare for heavy resistance. 
We approached the hive with a cautiousness born of weary experience. The silence was a pause before the inevitable storm. Then, a wave of the insectoids erupted from the hive entrance, a dark tide surging towards us. They seemed different here, bigger. My blade, once an instrument of efficient slaughter, felt sluggish, overwhelmed by the sheer number of the enemy. The metallic tang of blood mingled with the acrid scent of burning chitin. Around me, men fell, their screams swallowed by the deafening drone of the swarm. I fought with a primal desperation, a cold fury that mirrored the beings I was forced to kill. At some point, the lines blurred. Was I fighting for humanity or simply surviving in this brutal ecosystem? The answer, if there was one, was lost in the cacophony of battle. Then, a deafening screech erupted from the hive entrance. A creature unlike anything I'd ever seen emerged, a monstrous behemoth with razor-sharp claws and wings that cast an oppressive shadow. It was the leader, the hive mind controlling this relentless swarm. Panic surged through the ranks, men faltered, their blades falling slack in their hands. But before it could unleash its fury, a blinding flash illuminated the battlefield. A bomb dropped from an unseen orbital platform, detonated with a force that shook the very ground beneath our feet. The resulting inferno consumed both the creature and the hive entrance, a pyre fed by flesh and chitin. A deathly silence descended, broken only by the crackle of dying embers. We stood amidst the smouldering ruins, battered and bruised, victors in a pyrrhic victory. The cost was high, half our unit lay dead. In the aftermath of the battle, an unbearable silence descended upon us. Even the wind seemed to hold its breath, as if in reverence of the devastation we brought upon this world. The once vibrant hive was a cratered wasteland, a tombstone to the enemy we had destroyed. We went through the motions of battle cleanup like automatons. The grim act of cataloguing the dead was a numb routine by now. Faces once familiar were contorted in masks of agonized death, the stench of burned flesh and alien ichor, a permanent marker of this victory. Sergeant Hammer, his weathered face devoid of the usual stoicism, barked orders into the comm unit. His voice was strained, carrying the weight of this war's unfathomable cost. Command wants us to retrieve samples. Bioanalysis wants a look at whatever those things had become. The orders were met with a grim silence, followed by the reluctant shuffling of exhausted bodies. I found myself in the heart of the carnage, the air thick with the decaying remains of the insectoids. Armed with scalpels and sample containers, we performed this macabre dissection amidst the ashen ruins. The creatures we'd faced were a far cry from the smaller, less organized beasts of earlier encounters. Their carapaces had evolved into impenetrable armor, their limbs adapted for brutal, efficient killing strokes. Looking at their twisted forms, I felt a recognition. We weren't so different anymore. Something shifted inside me. Whether the last shred of humanity or simply disgust, I couldn't tell. Nausea churned in my gut, the acrid smell of burning flesh a constant torment. Back at base, the mood was bleak. Even the shouts of recruits during training drills felt subdued. The scientists buzzed around, their clinical demeanor cracking under the weight of the knowledge they had gleaned from the insectoid samples. Unprecedented levels of forced evolution, one muttered, shaking his head in grim disbelief. They were adapting, faster than we were. Our victory had been a mere delay. The enemy, driven to the brink, had evolved into something more formidable, more resilient. One evening I approached Doc Bones, his tired eyes fixed on a monitor. The stench of chemicals always hung thick around him, mingling with the perpetual undertone of medical disinfectants. Can you undo it? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Remove the carapace, the blades, all of it. He looked up slowly, pity in his bloodshot eyes that deepened the hollow ache in my gut. You know I can't, soldier. Doc replied, turning back to his monitor. It's gone too far. You're one of them now, just as much as they were. The finality of his words hit me. 
I had become the very thing we were sent to destroy, trapped in a shell of my own making. Sleepless nights stretched into eternity. I'd stare at my reflection in the cracked mirror, the monstrous carapace a stark reminder of the humanity I had sacrificed. Dreams were even worse. A montage of battlefields, alien screams, and the haunting image of the hive creature's multifaceted eyes, filled with pain and a sense of kinship. One morning, Hammer was nowhere to be found. His bunk was empty, his gear gone. Whispers swirled. Deserter, dead, executed. It didn't matter. His disappearance was a crack in the relentless machine of war, a glimmer of defiance against this bleak existence we were condemned to. I stood on the edge of the base, the setting alien sun painting the sky with a garish mix of blood red and orange. The desolate landscape mirrored the emptiness within me. It was time. The thought arrived unbidden, with a chilling clarity. I could stay, continue this monstrous existence, a pawn in a never-ending conflict, or I could embrace the freedom Hammer found in flight. I turned away from the base, its metallic silhouette a monument to everything I had lost. Every step took me further away, further into the desolate wilderness. Maybe there was nothing for me out there. Maybe even death was preferable to this living nightmare. Years passed. The ravaged alien world became my home, my battlefield, my tomb. Each day was a grim struggle for survival. I hunted the remaining insectoids, my skills honed by desperation and a simmering rage directed at no one in particular, or perhaps at myself. The barren landscape mirrored my soul. I became a legend whispered in the wind, a harbinger of death for both man and monster. Tales spread of a monstrous being lurking in the wasteland, neither human nor insect. Sometimes, from the corner of my eye, I'd catch glimpses of movement. Patrols, I assumed, from either side, seeking the ghost of legend. Once, a young soldier dared approach, his augmented eyes wide with terror and awe. His weapon trembled in his hands. I could have ended him then and there. Instead, in a cracked whisper that barely resembled human speech, I uttered a warning. Leave! The young soldier fled, dropping his weapon in his haste. It lay in the dust, a useless relic in a world ruled by desperation and cruelty. My existence became a brutal dance between instinct and the remnants of my shattered mind. There were moments of clarity, flashes of the man I was before the augmentations, before the war consumed everything. In those moments, the horror of my transformation was stark, a gaping wound in my soul. Then one day a tremor shook the ground unlike any I had felt before. It wasn't the rumble of battle, but something deeper, a primal shifting of the planet itself. Emerging from my shelter, I looked toward the horizon. An unnatural glow illuminated the sky, a green radiance, the war, it seemed, wasn't content to destroy just lives. It sought to consume the very world we fought over. News travelled fast through the desolate whispers of the wasteland. Orbital bombardment. A final apocalyptic gamble in a conflict that had no winners. The insectoids I had hunted scattered, driven by a primordial terror. I felt no fear, only a weary acceptance. My war, fought on both fronts, seemed to be drawing to a close. Perhaps this was how it was meant to end, not in a blaze of glory, but in the quiet finality of annihilation. I returned to the scorched ruins of the hive, the crater now eerily peaceful in this end-of-the-world light. Climbing to the highest point of the collapsed structure, I sat and I waited. My blade on my wrist gleamed sharply as the glow intensified. The explosion was not noise, but a blinding, all-consuming wave. It washed over me, a physical manifestation of a conflict that had gnawed at the souls of countless men and creatures alike. For a fleeting moment there was a strange sense of peace. The war, the monstrous noise of my past, it all seemed to fade into insignificance against the backdrop of a world burning. Then, there was nothing. Just the silence, and the ash drifting down on the wind, settling on a barren world 
where the lines between man and monster had long since vanished. 